Hi guys and welcome to Edureka Learning. In today's session, we are going to be looking at how you can install Kubernetes on CentOS 7 operating system and how you can configure it to your requirements. But before we begin, if you are new to this channel and you are interested in learning about DevOps or other technologies, do subscribe to our channel and watch our videos. And if you enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit the like button below. Also, if you are looking for an online certification course on DevOps, please check out the link given in the description box below. So, let's start by looking at today's agenda. These are what is Kubernetes and the prerequisites for installing Kubernetes. After that, we will dive right into our demo where we will install Kubernetes on CentOS 7 systems and then we'll configure our master node and the worker node and then join them. So, let's begin. What is Kubernetes? Well, Kubernetes is an open source cloud native container orchestration and management platform. It is used to automate deployment of software and maintain and manage containerized applications across different nodes. It is also known as K8 and it manages everything on its own, which is one of the reasons why it is so popular among the DevOps developers. Now, let's look at the prerequisites or the requirements for installing the Kubernetes. Here, first, you need to have two or more CentOS 7 servers. Next, you need the Docker. Also, you are gonna need root privileges on all the CentOS servers and you need a minimum of two CPUs and a minimum of two GB RAM with complete connectivity among all those servers. And you must have the swap disabled. This is a setting in the OS that can interfere with how Kubernetes operate. So let's go to the demo and see what we can do to get Kubernetes installed on our CentOS 7 system. Here I have two VMs. For this demo, we are using EC2 instances. As you can see, I have my instances running but this is not limited to the AWS cloud. You can have your private servers or other cloud servers as well. If you type into your browser, kubeadm install, you will see a link to the documentation. If you click on it, you will see what is the instructions. In the beginning, it says that you need a compatible Linux host for the installation and as we discussed in the prerequisites, you need 2 GB minimum of RAM and you need 2 CPUs or more. You also must have the swap disabled and you must have full connectivity among all the systems. Now, since we are going to be installing this on our CentOS 7 system, we will be looking at these instructions which are Red Hat based distribution because CentOS 7 is a Red Hat based distribution. So these are the instructions that we need to run in our command line. But before that can happen, we need to install Docker on both our worker and our master node. So let's get started. So I connect with my master and my worker node. And the first thing that we are going to do is we will type sudo yum check update. And I'll do the same in the worker node as well. Now that is done. I will go ahead and install the docker. So I'll copy this command and I'll run this on my worker as well. After this is done, what we'll be doing is we'll be installing the docker and we will be starting the docker service and we will enable the docker. And after that, we will escalate some privileges. Now, let's do the starting of Docker. Now, I'll type the same command in my worker node as well. Now, let's check the status of our Docker. So, as you can see, the Docker is active and running, but the service is still disabled. To change that, we will change the status to enable. And now, if we check again the status, it should say that our service is enabled. 
So we do the same thing on our worker as well. And let's confirm the status. So both our master and worker are now configured and now we can move on to the next step of installing the Kubernetes. So let's go to our documentation and then copy all of these commands into our notepad because this is all the commands that we will be running. And because this command is a comment, we will just remove this. So I have my notepad set up here and then I'll go ahead and delete this comment. As you can see, it will be creating a Kubernetes repo file and it will have some checks. So it has a GPG check, it has a repo GPG check, but I'll be just changing this to zero just to help install the Kubernetes faster on the system. So let's copy all of these commands and then paste it into our terminal. Now in our terminal, all the commands get executed one by one. And we do the same thing on our worker as well. And now on our master node, we are now ready to start the Kubernetes initialization. So to do that, the command for that is kubeadm in it and then you pass on the api server advertise address and this address is the private ip address of the instance so we'll go to our aws console and then find out the private ip of the master so as you can see this is the private ip so what i'll be doing is i'll paste this into a command here and then I'll type pod network CIDR. And for this, the ranges that we are going to be using is this. And now let's hit enter. It throws up an error message saying we are not the privileged user. So let's change that. Now let's run this command again. So as this is initializing, what I'll do on my worker node is that I'll keep this active. And I can do that by typing this command. So now this session won't log out and I can continue working with my master. So as you can see, it starts throwing up some errors. And this is what I wanted to show you because following the documentation doesn't actually lead to us getting the proper results. So we were able to find a workaround for that using community questions as well as some documentation. So let's close this and then let me show you the configuration that we have used. So this is the workaround that we have come up with for installing Kubernetes on CentOS 7. So if you look at the documentation, you can see here, if we scroll up under this portion, letting IP tables see bridge traffic, this was one of the workaround that we were able to fix. So what we have essentially done here is we have copied all of these commands and we have pasted this and other such things have been used to fix the kubernetes so i'll copy these commands and i'll paste this into our master node and here i'll be pasting this to get the kubernetes to work on our master now these commands reload the daemon and then it restarts the docker and essentially afterwards the cube atm initialization should essentially work okay now let's try running the initialization again so it starts throwing up some errors so what we can do is i'll type cube atm reset to reset everything and then type in yes and now let's run the cube ADM in it again. So as you can see, it says that we were successful and now we can start using our cluster. But before we can do that, we need to run these commands. And afterwards, we can join our worker nodes by using this command. So what I'll be doing is I'll be copying all of this into my notepad. And then I'll paste it here. Now I'll execute these top three commands right away. Remember, this has to be done on the master. 
that is these commands have to be run on the master unit okay now that we have done this we should be able to see our nodes so to do that what we'll type is kubectl get nodes and as we can see the master is now active but it is not in the ready status we can also check the status of the pods by typing this command so in here as you can see the core dns that is the first two are still in the pending status and everything else is running what this means is that the networking is not yet smooth and to fix that what we can do is we can use the calico installation to fix everything so if you type into your browser install calico you should go over to the documentation and because in our case we are using less than 50 nodes under this section we can follow these four steps and then we'll have a proper working master so the first step is to copy this command and paste it so i'll paste this into our master and then let's see what the documentation says so if you are using pod cidr which we did before the initializing then we can skip on to the next step so let's skip this and the third step says that you can customize the manifest as necessary now we don't need that so we'll directly go over to the fourth command which says the applying of the manifest using the following command so i'll just copy this command and i'll paste this in my master and now let's see the status of our pods so as you can see this is now working and if we click hitting refresh we should be able to see the status change so it is still in the initialization phase and now it seems like it is working but let's wait and as you can see now the network is properly set up so right now what we can do is we can go ahead on our worker node and then try to connect it to our master but before that some configuration things have to be done so to keep this session active i'll again type in this command and i'll go on to my worker node and then try to configure now these steps are what i found works in my case because the centos 7 needs some type of configuration to be done before it can work smoothly with the kubernetes so for that i have come up with this workaround and then i'll restart my daemon and the docker and then i restart the kubelet now i'll type in systemctl enable kubelet service and now i should ideally be able to connect to the master and to connect my worker node with my master what i'm going to do is i'll copy this command which was an output from the master and then i can copy this command into my worker node and then we should be able to connect with our master node now in here it says that we were able to get this connected now let's type in this command on our master to see if it was successful or not and now as you can see we have been connected with our master and we can see the status over here as ready so now that you have some idea on how you can install kubernetes on your centos 7 system feel free to experiment and then learn more about this it might be possible that some commands that we have run today might not exactly work for you but this is the major way that things are going to be done so as long as you follow the documentation properly you should be able to get your kubernetes working properly and then deploy your cluster with the docker and that's it thank you for watching this video and we hope you enjoyed a session do experiment and do keep learning devops because you learn more by failing rather than succeeding 
So, thank you again and bye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!